Tucker Carlson is taking up the cause of an Amish farm that the Biden administration is actively trying to crush. We're going to see what's going on here. We're going to see why the Fed's case against the farm is an utter joke. And make sure to stick with me at the very end of this video when I'll reveal why the Amish are guaranteed to have the last laugh. You're not going to want to miss this. Greetings, everyone. It's me, Dr. Steve, your patron professor, here to help you to think better so you can feel better in these crazy and turbulent times. If you haven't done so, you know what to do. Make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. Before we begin, gang, make sure to click on that link below and head on over to my special website for the Ready Project Food Supplies. We all know, especially since this whole pandemic insanity we cannot wait for emergencies to happen before we respond to one and no one and i mean no one makes preparing for an emergency more ridiculously easy and affordable than my friends over at the ready project food supply gang they're absolutely the best their food kits last up to 25 years in storage and they include breakfasts, lunches and dinners and if you act right now you're going to save 25% off a full four-week emergency supply when you click on the link below to my special website. So whatever you do, do not wait. I got my emergency food supply. Make sure you get yours. Click on that link below or go to GetReadyWithSteve.com and save 25% off your very own four-week emergency food supply today. All right, gang, let's dive right in here. Now, some of you may be aware of a story that's been making some waves over the last week. On the Biden administration's attempt to crush an Amish farm in Pennsylvania for refusing to adhere to FDA standards. For nearly three decades, you heard that right, for 30 years, Miller's Organic Farm in Burdenhan, Pennsylvania, has been selling everything from grass-fed cattle and cheese to unpasteurized milk, including chicken eggs, milk of grass-fed buffalo to various sorts of fruit, and every one of these items is sold to approximately 4,000 subscribers of a private food membership that pay premium prices for high-quality natural foods using traditional Amish methods of production. 30 years. That is until the Biden administration got wind of what they were doing. Here is Tucker Carlson exposing this insidious crackdown with Jeremy Lafredo, who works for Rebel News. This one story is kind of hard to believe. They're going after an Amish farmer. Who are they exactly? We have um, the U.S. Marshal Service recently raided Amos Miller's um, organic and holistic farm, um, demanding he cease operations, and they charged him, as you said, with $300,000 of fines, economically crippling the man. Um, and what's happening is you have um, the armed federal agents are demanding he stop uh, food production because of the meat, and you have him saying, well, you know what, I want to keep farming. So you have this back and forth between the giant empire of the U.S. federal government and this tiny little farm in Burdenhan, Pennsylvania. So they went after gyms, organic farmers, and churches. So maybe they're against anything that's wholesome and edifying that makes you stronger and healthier and in favor of everything that diminishes you and makes you more dependent. I'm just sensing a theme here. Do you see this? Yeah, and another thing the community says is that they're coming after Amos to set an example. They're coming after an independent, successful farmer who um, takes out the government middlemen and provides food directly to his community and his people. Now, by taking out the middleman, by taking out the government, you're taking power away and taking leverage away from the government and putting that power and leverage in the hands of the community and the farmers and the people. And another thing I'll add is Amos's farm doesn't use any gasoline or any fertilizer. Now, as you know, these right. commodities have become very expensive because of Biden's policies in regards to the war in Ukraine and Russia. So Amos has completely um, eliminate, eliminated any risk coming from um, the international or domestic politics of the Biden administration. And, you know, they're coming after him for it. Maybe if he promises to put more chemicals in the milk that turn kids trans, they'll lay off. Did any of the federal marshals decline to raid an Amish organic farm on principle, or did they all just go along with this? Do you know? All I know is that um, many federal agents did not um, decline to go and did go along with it and raided the farm and took inventory of Amos's um, farm to make sure that he doesn't sell or produce any more meat. You know, I'm, we're for law enforcement, broadly speaking, but there's such a thing as conscience, okay? And they should not have gone along with this. When they tell you to raid an organic Amish farm, that's when you bow out, okay? I would say. All right, now, 
I think it's important to realize this is not the first time the feds have done this. Back in 2017, a Kentucky judge sentenced a 57-year-old Amish farmer and father of 12 to six years in prison for producing an herbal skin cream without the government's permission. And what he did is he produced homemade skincare products on his family farm, and he sold them for two decades throughout the upper Midwest, largely through word-of-mouth promotion. And despite the fact that the products were all natural, right, so they were made from ingredients like chickweed and rosemary, olive oil, peppermint, and, and like, because he claimed that the skincare products could help cure various skin ailments, the federal government insisted that products intended to treat ailments have to be treated as drugs and therefore had to be approved by the Food and Drug Administration and approved in, uh, in an approved facility. And this Amish fellow basically said, no, no, I'm not accountable to your secular rules and protocols. I'm Amish. I'm producing these products the way God wants me to in a, in a traditional Amish way. And as a result, he was sentenced to prison. Now, leftists are all for this, right? We all know that. They're all for this because this Amish farm in Pennsylvania that Tucker highlighted was indeed involved a few years back with a listeria outbreak, which infected two people, one of whom did die, and it was traced back to this farm. So yes, there was most certainly a toxicity incident that has been traced back to the farm, and since then the food inspectors have been cracking down on Amos's operations, as they should, as far leftists as these far as these leftists are concerned. For heaven's sake, there was a deadly bacteria outbreak from the farm that these FDA regulations are designed to prevent, you creeps. But what woke leftists seem to be so utterly oblivious to is that more and more of us on the right see the federal government as itself a health hazard? Note what Tucker said in the interview. He noted that maybe if Amos promised to put more chemicals in the milk to turn kids trans, they'll lay off. Now, obviously, Tucker's being facetious, but he's making a very important point here. Think of it in light of his first response to all this when Tucker said that the pattern he's seeing here is that the federal government is consistently going after gyms, organic farmers, and churches. In other words, the pattern appears to be, in Tucker's words, whatever is wholesome and edifying and that makes you stronger and healthier and more independent from the federal government and its managerial class is being cracked down against. It's considered bad and evil and needs to be shut down. In other words, again, whether the political left likes it or not, this perceived persecution of an Amish farm is clearly seen by many as a clash, as it were, between two fundamentally different visions of society. One that is far more traditional, one that honors what scholars call mediating structures and institutions, such as churches and local community organizations, as necessary for a healthy and flourishing society. And another one that appears to want to do away with all of those mediating institutions and govern the population directly with a one-size-fits-all managerial rule by a centralized oligarchy, a permanent political class that for tens of millions of Americans is currently pursuing policies they consider to be deleterious to human health. Now, this is a very real clash between two fundamentally different antithetical visions of life, and it was inevitable that the Amish would eventually be drawn into this clash. For centuries, the Amish have been building what scholars call a parallel society or a parallel polis, right? Polis being the Greek word for the ancient city-state, like, like we use in the word Indianapolis or metropolis, right? Uh, parallel polis is a largely self-sufficient life world that runs on alternative structures and institutions to that of the more dominant society. I remember recently asking an expert on the Amish in Lancaster what he believed was the most common response among Amish that he heard whenever tourists would ask, what is it like to be Amish? And he didn't blink an eye. He said the single most common response he's heard over the years from the Amish themselves when asked, what is it like to be Amish? Is they always say, secure. Isn't that interesting? There's an overwhelming sense that all of their needs are met by the community and by the larger Amish communities who are always ready to step in to help any Amish family in need. There are no homeless Amish. 
There are no unemployed Amish. There are no Amish that don't have their medical needs met because of costs. They have built a relatively self-sufficient life world that literally meets all of their needs. And that means, of course, they don't need Biden and the woke left. And they sure as heck don't want them. And that is why, as far as Tucker and many of us are concerned, that is why the Amish are now becoming targets. But the joke is on the woke. (laughs) That's right. As it turns out, it's too late. The Amish have, in many respects, already won. But first, as a reminder, gang, our good friends over at GoldCo are here to help you protect your savings in the midst of all of this economic insanity with the timeless value of gold and silver. They're patriots just like us, and they're here to help you guard and save your assets. Make sure to click on that link below and see how you can get upwards of $10,000 of free silver if you open up an account with them. They're absolutely amazing, and they're here for you. As many of you know, especially if you're a regular to this channel, the Amish are growing by leaps and bounds in terms of population. In fact, Pennsylvania Dutch, as it's called, the language, is one of the fastest growing dialectics, dialects, I should say, in the world. If you didn't know, the Amish double every 20 years, which is an utterly astonishing rate of growth. And by the way, I assure you, it's not because of conversions. Depending on the district or community, Amish families can average upwards of 7 to 10 children. Now, keep in mind, this is all happening at the very same time that the larger secular population in the United States, the aggregate population, is dwindling. As demographers such as Eric Kaufman have shown, one of the chief reasons for that is that liberals have basically stopped having kids. Liberals, precisely because of their liberal worldview, see the family as nothing more than a mere lifestyle choice and are therefore free not to reproduce, which most of them are being rather faithful and not doing. So in the United States today, those who self-identify as liberals consistently exemplify a birth rate far below the replacement level of 2.1 children per couple. By contrast, the Amish population is exploding, so much so that demographers predict the Amish will actually surpass our current population of over 330 million by the mid to end of next century. Now, I don't know where they're going to put all the horses and buggies, (laughs) but you can be absolutely sure that if demographics is destiny, the future for liberals is extremely bleak, while the future for the Amish and all communities who value mediating and parallel institutions is very bright indeed. As always, make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button, and you will definitely want to check out my latest video on woke leftists getting crushed in school board elections all across Florida. It's going to make your day. Red wave, gang. Red wave. So make sure to click on that link, and I'll see you over there. God bless.